As the next video in my clinical scales series, we're going to talk about has blood scores. So as the name implies, a has blood score is a score that helps determine the bleeding risk for patients who have atrial fibrillation and are either on anticoagulation or you're considering anticoagulation. So this is typically used in combination with, as the most recent video suggested, the CHADS2 VASC score. Recall from that video that CHADS2 VASC helps you determine the risk of stroke and whether you need to put somebody on anticoagulation. That needs to be balanced against this has blood score, which once they're on anticoagulation, increases the risk for bleeding. So has bled will tell you what the relative risk for a major bleed is. Now the term major bleed includes intracranial bleeds, like intracranial hemorrhage, any hemoglobin drop of two or more, or the requirement for hospitalization or blood transfusion. So H-A-S-B-L-E-D, all of these letters stand for something, and let's go through it now. The H stands for hypertension, and to be perfectly clear, we're only talking about systolic. We don't care about diastolic here. So if you have greater than 160 systolic hypertension, that's one point. And if you do not have greater than 160 systolic hypertension, you get zero points. A stands for abnormal, and there are actually two points that you could score here depending on if you have liver disease or kidney disease. In the case of liver disease, if you have liver disease, you give one point. If you don't have liver disease, you score zero points. What constitutes liver disease? Liver disease would include bilirubin that's greater than two times normal, AST or ALT that's greater than three times normal, or the presence of cirrhosis. Any one of those findings would count for liver disease, which would be one point. In addition, the presence of renal disease scores you one point. And of course, if they don't have renal disease, that particular category is zero points. What constitutes renal disease? If the patient is on hemodialysis, if the patient has a history of renal transplant, if the patient's creatinine is greater than either 2.26 milligrams per deciliter or greater than 200 micromoles per liter, either one of those findings would be positive for renal disease, and then you would give the patient one point. So to be perfectly clear, if you have a patient who has both liver and kidney disease, they score two points in A for abnormal. S stands for stroke, pretty simple. If the patient has a history of stroke, they get a point. If they have no history of stroke, they get zero points. The B stands for bleeding. If they have a history of a major bleed, they get one point. If they have no history of a major bleed, they get zero points. And again, major bleed is defined as intracranial hemorrhage, hemoglobin greater than two in terms of it dropping, the need for hospitalization or the need for transfusion. L, L stands for labile INR. So a labile or high INR increases the risk of bleeding if the INR is high or if the patient is less than 60% time in range, that is worth one point. If they have no high INR, meaning that it's normal or they're in range in an appropriate amount of time, that is worth zero points. The E in Hasbled stands for elderly. We're talking specifically about age greater than 65. So if they are over 65, they get one point. If they are 64 or younger, they get zero points. And then the D, which is our last letter, actually stands for two different things. It's drugs or it's drinks. So for drinks, if the patient consumes eight or more alcoholic drinks per week, if yes, that's one point. If no, that's zero points. For drugs, drugs that increase, increase the bleeding risk. So if the patient takes drugs that increase risk of bleeding, if yes, that's one point. If no, that is zero points. What drugs are we talking about? We're talking about our antiplatelet agents like aspirin and clopidogrel, and we're talking about NSAIDs. So if patient is on drugs that increase bleeding risk, if yes, one point, if no, zero points. So remember, D is two points potentially, and sometimes 
people will either write has bled with two D's at the end. So H-A-S-B-L-E-D-D -D, to help remember that the D is potentially two D's or some people write has bled two to remember that there's two points on the D. Also remember that there can be two points on the A. So these are all things that you wanna keep in mind. So now that we have this clear, this is how you interpret a has bled score. So a score of zero to one is a low risk up to an approximate three and a half percent risk of major bleed. If a patient is only scoring zero to one, they can be safely put on anticoagulation without risk of major bleed. If the score is two, they have a moderate risk of major bleed, approximately 4%. In this category, anticoagulation may also be considered. But as soon as you get to three or more points, now suddenly the major risk of bleeding is high. So when you score three to five points, this is a high risk of major bleed. In this category, you would want to consider alternatives to anticoagulation. And at a score of six or more, this is a very high risk of bleed, approximately 10 or more percent. And then in this category, you would want to consider alternatives to anticoagulation. So that center column, that guideline column, this is what you're going to see show up on USMLE and Comlex, on your internal medicine shelf exams, on your clinical rotations. You wanna know at what point do you really need to weigh the risks versus benefits of bleeding? And that's gonna be at three or more points. So this is another video in my clinical scales series. Best of luck.